and gentlemen, let's hear it for our veterans drumline. Right behind the drum line, we have our band. And let's hear it for the Chargerettes. And definitely let's hear it for our cheerleaders. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for our ROTC. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Brownsville, Texas, home of the Mighty Veteran Chargers. Let's hear it for the Chargers. I'll ask everybody to please remain standing for the alma mater.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing at this moment. We have the presentation of colors by the Veterans High School, Early College High School, Marine, J-R-O-T-C. For the guards tonight, we have Color Guard Commander Cadet 2nd Lieutenant Iram Lerma carrying the Marine Corps colors, Cadet Gunnery Sergeant Carlos Cordero, the right rifle bearer, Cadet Sergeant Catherine Erisuris, the left rifle bearer is Cadet Corporal Vene Leos. The Color Guard is under the direction of Sergeant Major Lewis. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. Remove all caps and covers as we recite the American, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the Texas Pledge recited by student Natalie Chavez. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with the liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one indivisible. Thank you. At this moment, we're going to have the national anthem sung by Veterans Early College High School senior Diego Fernandez. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet away or the land of the Thank you, you may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our principal, Ms. Norma G. Canales, and the faculty and staff and administration of Veterans Early College High School, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to this, our Veterans Charger Recognition Night. I'm going to begin with the introduction of the dignitaries. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for our interim superintendent, Dr. Jesus H. Chavez.
A nice round of applause for our board secretary, Ms. Denise Garza. A nice round of applause for our interim board member, Tim Ramirez. Present with us, we have Mr. Alonso Guerrero, Administrator for Nursing and Maintenance. And a very nice round of applause for our Chief Academic Officer, Ms. Beatriz Hernandez. And last but certainly not least, nice round of applause for our Chief of Police, Mr. Os Chief Oscar Garcia. Representing the ABI Slee Athletics Office, our Athletic Director, Mr. Gilbert Leal. <laughs> Assistant Athletic Director, Sandra Powers. <laughs> At this time, I'm going to call the members of the Veterans Early College High School Administrative Team. And as I call your name, please stand, stand to be recognized. We're going to begin with our campus principal, Ms. Norma Jean Canales. Instructional coach, Gracie Luna Melendez. <laughs> Assistant principal, Gamamiel Salazar. <laughs> Assistant principal, Cynthia Garza. <laughs> Assistant principal, Freddy Martinez. Assistant Principal, Brenda Aguilar. <laughs> Assistant Principal, Allison Tamayo. <laughs> and Assistant Principal, Rebecca Trejo Castillo. <laughs> At this moment, I'd like to introduce a nice round of applause for Ms. Canales as she introduces our head coach and our coordinators. Thank you, Mr. Longoria. I'm very humbled and proud to present our head coach for football, Mr. J.C. Ramirez. Our offensive coordinator, Mike Evans. And our defensive coordinator, Pete Lozano. So we have some wonderful coaches on staff. And I'm going to hand over the mic to Who's going next? Mr. Longoria will be introducing the rest of the coaching staff. So thank you. As I call your name, please join us in the front. Varsity coaching staff, Jesse Alariz, linebackers. <laughs> Jaime Castaneda, cornerbacks. Coach Jerry Delgado, defensive line. <laughs> Coach Juan Ayala, slots. <laughs> Coach Joe Martinez, receivers. <laughs> Coach Mark Slaughter, outside linebackers. And Coach Ruben Cortez, safeties. Our additional assistant coach, Coach Andrew Crum. Coach Matt Leffler. Coach Adam Vera. Coach Henry Villalon. Coach Javier Vargas. Coach Albert Vasquez. 
Coach Melissa Barrera. Coach Jose Luis Sarate. And a nice round of applause for our athletic trainer, Ms. Liz Crum. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a very nice round of applause for our entire coaching staff. Please join us in welcoming our team captain, receiver, and defensive back, Gilbert Trio. <laughs> Mr. Trio earned the huge honor of being this year's district MVP, as well as the All-Metro MVP. Mr. Trio will be speaking about the Chargers' regular season. Hello, Charger Nation. Um, after a great spring season and strong summer workouts, we kicked off this year's football season back in August. We had such a good year last year, and even though we had some changes to our coaching staff, we had built a strong foundation. We had several key players returning on offense and defense, lots of new talent ready to move up and fill the positions of guys we lost to graduation. Our season started off with a loss to the always strong San Benito Greyhounds, but we played well and showed our coaches our potential. We came back with a vengeance to defeat the St. Joe Bloodhounds before a packed home crowd. The rowdy atmosphere at this game would foreshadow our amazing fan support during our long playoff run. After St. Joe, we traveled to Port Isabel to take on the Tarpons. It wasn't a pretty game, but we came out with a W. The next week, we suffered another setback with a loss against another strong program, PSGA. This loss opened our eyes and made us realize that if we wanted a winning season, we were going to have to trust our coaches and each other. Going into district play with a 2-2 two two record, we were under the radar. But we played hard week after week. We knew we were about to break through. We started district soundly, beating a one-loss Donna team that had one of the top offenses in RGV. Then we beat West Coast East in a nail-biter, 25-20. to 20. We let them play with us and take a late lead. This forced us to drive down the field and so score quickly to seal the victory. This game showed we could perform under pressure. The victories over Brownsville Pace and Donna North kept momentum going for our team. Then we played Harlingen South. The Hawks, like us, were undefeated. They had been constantly ranked in the top 10 all season long. They had a strong defense, and their offense up to that point had been unstoppable. And we beat them 42-0. to zero. This victory clinched us a share of the district title, which would match our accomplishments in 2022. But it wasn't enough. Our victory over Lopez that last game gave us the district title outright. Gold ball number one was secured. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Drew. Our next speaker is our team captain and quarterback, Storm Montoya. Mr. Montoya. Mr. Montoya has earned the title of All-Metro First Team Quarterback. He will also be speaking about the Chargers' playoff run. For the first round of playoffs, we took on McAllen High, backed by a stellar play from Gilbert Trillo, who scored four touchdowns. What a player. <laughs> we won the by district championship before a home crowd at Sam Stadium by defeating the Bulldogs 55 to 21, gold ball number two. This set up our area round versus Corpus Christi Vets. We had played CC Vets four times in our school's history in 2017, 2018, 2021, and 2022. But we were never able to come away with a win at Buccaneer Stadium. Leading up to the game day, we had to fight for respect. We heard comments like, it's Valley Week. 
meaning everyone thought would, it would be an e easy win for, for them. But we wanted this game bad. It was a defensive game. But in the end, we took the, the W 17-7 over the v Eagles, earning a little more respect. Gold ball number three. Our next round would be against the 12-0 PSJ North Raiders, who were not just ranked number one in the RGV, but also ranked number seven in the state. To say we were the underdogs, but the understatement of the year. No one thought we could win. No one expect our coaches, our families, and ourselves. From the recovery of the first onside kick to, to Trillo scoring four touchdowns again. What a good player. <laughs> to the defense coming in clutch with crucial stops when it needed to. Almost everything in that game went right for us. And when it was all over, we traveled to their stadium, defeated PPR, apparently, 45 to 28, and claimed the semi-regional title. We did that with great focus, effort, and class. Gold ball number four was secured. Many sports writers considered that the upset of the season until next week when we took on Corpus Christi Miller for the Region 4 title. Out of 31 teams from the RGV who qualified for the playoffs, at this point in season, we were the last team left, and all eyes were on us. Miller was favored by most to win, but we were more than happy to fill the role of the underdog. At the beginning, we were a little nervous and made some mistakes that led us being down 14-0 at half. The start of the fourth quarter had us down 28-7, but something clicked for us. A crucial interception by Edo Spineda. What a dog. A forced fumble caused by Mickey Rodriguez. And four unanswered touchdowns. I don't know who that was. <laughs> Turn this game around. It came down to the final seconds of the game. But when it was all over, we had won the first regional championship in our school's history. And the first for any BISD school in over 60 years. <laughs> Gold ball number five was secured. The state semifinal game against Smithson Valley was, the, was that we will never forget. Even though we didn't get the outcome we, we wanted, our fans stayed through the entire game cheering us on. Even way after the game was over, knowing we had the love and support from our friends, family, and the entire Rio Grande Valley made the loss a little more unbearable. We played five playoff games in one season, which is the first for any school in BISD. We were one game shy of playing the state title, and we did it together. Thank you. You're going to excuse me, I got out of order, and, but I'm going to welcome at this time, our next speaker is our team captain and quarterback, I'm sorry, Mr. Edgar Vela, team captain. When this season started, Coach Ram told us that together, we had a chance to accomplish something great. We just had to believe in it ourselves. Once we bought in 100%, we had the time of our lives. And along the way, we grew as a team and as individuals. We learned a lot from each other. 
Some of the lessons from this season that we'll never forget include how to challenge one another to get better, how to tough it out like Rosas and Alvin, how to remain humble like Trillo and Storm, how to come back from injury like Salvera and Sosa, how to serve the team with your whole heart even when you can't be on the field anymore like Pinales. We also learned a lot from our coaching staff, lessons that will last a lifetime. We learned how to play through adversity from Coach Liz. We were inspired to play for our brothers and for our school from Sager, Sergeant, Sergeant Major Lewis. And we learned how to find joy, even in the face of the defeat from Coach Ryan. And most importantly, we learned how to play so as to leave no doubt in anyone's mind what we can accomplish when we are given the opportunity to succeed. Looking back over this season, it's amazing to see just how far we've come. We have started out as a team that was overlooked by most to the only team left, left standing in the RGV. We won district by district, area, semi-regional, and regional champions. We made it to the state finals. We took a team that no one believed in and achieved something special together. We charged our way into history. Our objective was never to prove people wrong, but rather to prove ourselves right. We now have a great memories and these six trophies to attest that we did just that. Go Chargers. Ladies and gentlemen, as anybody that's ever been involved in any kind of an organized sport, we always tend to sacrifice, and for that sacrifice, I'd like to recognize, at this time, Coach Ramirez's family, if they would please stand. Thank you. Within the audience, if we have any family members of our coaching staff, would you please stand to be recognized? Thank you for everything that you put up with. And finally, before that, I'd like to recognize our parents. If our football team's parents are here, please stand to be recognized. Thank you so very much for your commitment and your sacrifice all throughout this entire season. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, the man of the moment, Coach J.C. Ramirez. Well, first of all, thank you for so much for, for being here tonight. And if you're here tonight, you probably were with us throughout this entire magical season. Um, like Mr. Longoria just, just asked for an applause for our parents. So first and foremost, thank you. Thank you so much for entrusting us, BISD, Veterans Memorial High School, and specifically our coaching staff, with your child we're for letting us be a be a, a big part of the young men that they are becoming and the man that we all want for them to be in the future and that is a strong leader in their careers but more importantly that they grow up to be great great leaders for their families and so for that we say thank you parents Now, as far as our team makeup, I, I, I love to brag as I look at our kids and I can very proudly tell you that we have a great senior bunch that really were the leaders to our success this year. But we have seniors, we have juniors, we have sophomores, and we even have some freshmen that were able to contribute to this magical run. At the end of our last game, one of the reporters asked me, Coach, can you use one word
to describe this season and this team. And my genuine and only answer that I could give him was special. It takes a special group of kids, a special group of coaches, a special school, a special administration team, a special community to be able to enjoy a season like the one we had. And so tonight, I tell my kids all the time, you're not just regular high school kids, you're veterans high school kids. You're not just regular high school football players, you're Charger football players. And they know the, the second part to this, and we, we, I do tell them, and because you are Charger football players and we are all Chargers, we know that that is a great honor, but with great honor comes great responsibility. And I can tell you right now that these young men really set out to represent you, our community, with the best that is in them. And the best that is in them comes from you. Every single one of you that pours your love, your affection, your effort, your money, your early morning wake-ups to drive them to practice because the coaches at Veterans decided that we're going to have 6 a.m. practice. And you all do it. And so thank you so much. I'm super proud to say that we are Chargers. And man, like uh, Mr. Vela just finished, we have great memories, but we also have six trophies to prove that we did it the right way. And now we can all celebrate and say, go Chargers, baby. Thank you, Coach. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to welcome Coach Gilbert Leal to tell us about the historic significance of this season. Good evening. Uh, first of all, on behalf of our Brownsville Athletic Department, I want to uh, be the first one to congratulate the entire team and the community and the school and Brownsville ISD for a uh, incredible dreamy season uh, i've been involved in athletics for 31 years coached for 25 years and was involved in uh coached in eight third round playoff games in my career never could punch it in never could punch it in and so you heard and we heard the same things that you know that the rgv has been talking about for years is that you know when it gets to a certain round of the playoffs that you know things don't work out right and so for the uh for this season, I just want to uh, talk about some of the historical uh, significance of what just happened uh, this last fall. We're going to start back in when Brownsville's very first football game, the very first competitive UIL football game, was played in 1909. And the Hannah, or Brownsville High School Eagles was 0-2, and, and that was the football season, 1909. So let's fast forward to to some more successful years. In 1951, our Brownsville Eagles were the Class 3A state semifinalists. Now, this, the high school, Hannah High School, went 10 and 2 under Coach Bob Martin and reached the first state semifinal. Brownsville defeated San Antonio Edison in the first round before they lost to Temple in the second round in what's called, at that time, the Final Four. So it took Three, seat, three rounds in order to win the state championship in 1951, and they were defeated in the second round. Since then, Brownsville Hannah has advanced two times to the second round in school history. Excuse me, four times to the second round. 1951, 1962, 1969, and 1996. Before this season, only four teams have ever advanced to the third round in Brownsville ISD. In 1999 and in 2000, uh, uh, 2014, two Brownsville Rivetta teams advanced to the third round 
under uh, Coach Tom Chavez. In 2018, the Hannah Eagles advanced to the third round before being knocked off in an extremely close football game in the Alamo Dome, 33-32 to against San Antonio Brandeis with Coach Mark Guess. Last year, 2022, the Veterans Memorial Chargers was the first team in school history to advance to the third round led by Coach Kelly Lee and marking only the fourth team in BISD history to advance to the third round. And then comes this year. This year's uh, Veterans Chargers uh, coached by Coach J.C. Ramirez. His first year as the head football coach here at Veterans was the 16-5A Division I undefeated district champions. By district champions, by defeating McAllen. Area champions, by defeating Corpus Christi Veterans. Regional semifinal champions, by defeating PSJ North. And let me talk about this next game a little bit. Our regional championship here at Sam's historic Sam Stadium. Uh, of course, if you look at all the, the lore of, of how big you know Sam Stadiums is, I think officially it probably holds 9,805 seats. Well, we can only sell so many seats, and by UIL rules, we're, we're required to sell 50% of those tickets to both teams up until kickoff. Well, we may have some ticketing issues, and we may have smidged a little bit, and we may have gone a little bit over 50%, but it's, a, it's Brownsville, right? Yeah. So we were able to squeeze in 13,000. I think I talked to Chief, and we do have an excellent, excellent security detail, and there's a lot of people that are responsible for making that game happen. So I heard that there was maybe 14,000 people that went through our metal detectors, so... I know only 10,000 of them paid, so I'm going to be looking on the cameras to see who sneaked in. But that game right there was a magical, magical football game. It not only shows the resistance of a football team that happened all year long, but the fourth quarter is to have that many incredible plays happen back to back to back to back to back. It was, it was, it was a, a moment for me, and I know for Brownsville and for our school district, it will be something we'll always remember. Uh, we have a picture in a, with a drone shot that will be at Sam Stadium for everybody to see forever and ever until we're able to host maybe a state semifinal game, maybe next year, right? Fifth round. So uh, on behalf of our athletic department, what you did this year was special. It'll, it, uh, up until today, is, it has have never been done in the history of Brownsville ISD. And as the proud athletic director, I just want to thank you. I want to thank uh, the parents, the coaches, the principal, the administration, our, our superintendent and our board. And if I could just add one more thing. I kind of knew something was up during the regional final game when I just saw the mothers of the football kids that, I, that woke up. They were, awake, they were meeting me up at, at, at Sam's at 6 o'clock in the morning, already decorating everything all over. And they're up at midnight, and they're up at 5 in the morning. I, I, told, I told some of the mothers, I said, man, if, if we have a great chance to win this game, if they have the same type of fire that you do, then we're going to be just fine. So thank you, mothers. And congratulations, Chargers. At this time, we're going to announce all our players, our football team, and they're going to be presented with a medal. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, as I call your name, please step up to the front to be awarded your medal for this wonderful, wonderful season. Along with the coaches at the end of the line, I'd like to ask our interim superintendent and board members that are present here tonight to please join us in congratulating the team. So to everybody here tonight, uh, one of these trophies that you see up here kind of doesn't meet the mold of the others, okay? And this one we just received in the mail two days ago, and this is the official trophy that we get 
uh, from the state UIL. And later on, you'll have an opportunity to come and check it out a little bit closer. But it reads, State Semifinalist Football Conference 5A Division I 2023. There's a big insignia of the UIL crest. And the medal that our boys are receiving is an exact replica of this. And so this is official from the UIL that, that recognize our kids as state semifinalists. Thank you, Coach. Gentlemen, as I call your name, please come up to receive your medal. Running back, 12th grader, Gilbert Trello. <laughs> Running back, 11th grader, Mark Samano. <laughs> Running back, 12th grader, Jose Sanchez. Running back, ninth grader, Maddox Bond. <laughs> Wide receiver, 11th grader, Joseph Brock. <laughs> Linebacker, 12th grader, Jaime Martinez. Quarterback, 11th grader, Storm Montoya. <laughs> Defensive back, 11th grader, Eros Pineda. <laughs> Quarterback, 11th grader, Sergio Sosa. Wide receiver, 12th grader, Jerry Gomez. <laughs> Linebacker, 11th grader, Jaden Fernandez. Defensive end, 12th grader, Miguel Silvera. <laughs> Defensive back, 12th grader, Josh Perez. <laughs> Quarterback, 10th grader, Javier Vera. Fullback, 10th grader, Cesar Belmontes. <laughs> Defensive back, 10th grader, Tyson Rios. <laughs> Wide receiver, 9th grader, Riley Bocanegra. <laughs> Running back, 11th grader, Jerry Jaramillo. <laughs> Defensive back, 11th grader, Mickey Rodriguez. <laughs> Fullback, 11th grader, Alvin Trevino. <laughs> Linebacker, 11th grader, Max Fernandez. Running back, 10th grader, Calvin Trevinian. <laughs> Wide receiver, 10th grader, Nico Cisneros. <laughs> Kicker, 11th grader, Roman Reina. Defensive back, senior, Francisco Gonzalez. <laughs> D 
Defensive back, 11th grader, Elio Gutierrez. <laughs> Defensive back, 10th grader, Andy Ayala. <laughs> Quarterback, 9th grade, Jake Sines. Defensive back, 11th grader, J.P. Flores. <laughs> Defensive end, 12th grader, Matt Maldonado. <laughs> Defensive back, 10th grader, Aaron Martinez. <laughs> Kicker. 10th grader, Edgar Varela. <laughs> Defensive end, 10th grader, Brian Castillo. <laughs> Linebacker, 11th grader, Alonso Mireles. Defensive end, 11th grader, Ray Cantu. <laughs> Tight end, 10th grader, Sean Watson. <laughs> Linebacker, 10th grader, Edgar Vela. Offensive line, 11th grader, Oberlin Moreno. <laughs> Offensive line, 12th grader, Israel Yanez. <laughs> Linebacker, 12th grade, Jacob Rosas. Offensive line, 11th grader, Zeke Zarate. <laughs> Linebacker, 11th grade, Juan Marroquin. <laughs> Defensive end, 10th grader, Damian Rodriguez. Defensive line, senior, Juan John Luna. <laughs> Offensive line, 12th grader, Jezreel Garza. <laughs> Defensive line, 12th grader, Enrique Rendon. Offensive line, 11th grader, Rafael Lara. <laughs> Offensive line, 11th grader, Santiago Sanchez. <laughs> Offensive line, 12th grader, Angel Pinales. Offensive line, 10th grader, Vincent Lucio. <laughs> Offensive line, 11th grader, Leo Rosales. <laughs> Defensive back, 11th grader, Pedro Arguelles. Running offensive and defensive line, Evan Vega, 11th grade. <laughs> defensive line, 12th grader, Malachi Valdez.
Offensive line, 12th grader, Matthew Pinon. <laughs> Tight end, 12th grader, Nick Tovar. <laughs> Kicker, 12th grade, All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to ask the players to remain here. And at this time, right after we conclude with our fight song, then we're going to allow people to be able to come take pictures with them. But at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have the fight song with the Veterans Early College High School Band. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for our Chargers! Ladies and gentlemen, I've been instructed to let you know that if you will please come in through the gate where the cheerleaders are at and Chief Garcia, that's going to be the entrance right there so that you can come out of the field. We're going to have posters, we're going to have signatures, pictures, and everything. And as we conclude, Ms. Canales. Thank you so much for being here, and as always, go Chargers!